Okay, we will get started uh, uh, with today's lecture. Uh, the topic we were discussing in the previous class was about uh, optimizing functions over a convex set. So we wanted to minimize fx such that x is in capital X, x is a convex set and we studied two conditions, necessary and sufficient conditions for optimality which said that if x star is, is optimal then x minus x star transpose gradient of f at x star is non-negative for every x in the convex set capital X and the sufficient condition was f convex then x star optimal if and only if x minus x star transpose gradient of f x star is greater than or equal to 0 for all x in capital X. Okay, so these were the two uh, results we proved in the previous class. Um, so we proved this using Taylor series formula and we proved this or rather the opposite side which is this implies that using the definition of convex functions. Okay. Now today's class uh, we want to think about a simple algorithm uh, so that we could converse to a point which satisfies the first order necessary condition well yeah the first order necessary condition for optimality okay so we would like to have xk plus 1 equals xk plus alpha dk and let's say I am in a convex set capital X and I am at one of the points let's say inside the point inside the set cap, uh, capital X I can potentially pick any of the direction dk right and I can take a small step in that direction without any problem. However, if I am at the boundary, then it seems like we have restricted number of directions in which we can go to and if we want to apply, let's say, dk equals to minus gradient fxk, let's say I pick the point, uh, the vector dk, the direction dk to be the negative of gradient, then the negative of gradient could be in, could be going outside the set, right? So in which case, uh, no matter how big of a step or small of a step I take, I will always land up outside the set and that's a problem, okay? Let's follow the argument again. If I'm inside the set, I can go in any direction, I don't have any problem. However, if I'm at the boundary of a set and I want to take a step in the direction of negative gradient, which is what we did in the case of unconstrained optimization, then we have a problem that no matter how small or large of a step size I take, I'll always land up being outside the set because this would be the point xk plus xk minus alpha k gradient of fxk. So what can we do to alleviate situations like this? Put the vector. Sorry? Put the gradient. Constrain the gradient. So if I constrain the gradient, so no matter how I constrain the gradient, I am always going to land up out. Oh, you are going to rotate the gradient, I see. How will you rotate it? 
by multiplying with a positive definite matrix. But what will be the choice of your positive definite matrix? It didn't matter what the choice of positive definite matrix was for the unconstrained case because all the directions are feasible. You can go in any direction. But in this case, uh, you have to, I mean, even though if you pick some positive definite matrix, it's unclear what is go which positive definite matrix is going to make it inside the set provably, no matter which x you pick and which function f you pick. Okay, so we'll think about it in a few lectures from now. There was some hand somewhere here, so yeah. Project onto the set. Pro project onto the set. Okay, so the other idea is, I am going to. Take a, I'm going to pick a point which is outside the set and then I'm going to project it onto the set. Okay, there was a third idea. Feasible direction, okay. So that's another point. So one idea I got was I, I, even if I go outside the set, that's not a problem. I can always project the point into the set and by projection, we'll make it uh, concrete in a few uh, minutes from now. So what exactly a projection means, but we can get to a point which is closest in this particular set and that would be the new point, xk plus 1. The other idea was that instead of picking a direction which is negative gradient, I'm going to pick a direction which is uh, an appropriately picked point x bar k in the set and then the dk would be x bar k minus x k, okay? So the other idea is, so idea number one, project onto the set, and idea number two, pick x bar k in capital X appropriately, And uh, you have dk equals x bar k minus xk, okay? So my direction would be x bar k minus xk. Now the question becomes, how should we pick x bar k appropriately? So let's talk about projection first because it's a powerful idea. Uh, and then we'll also talk about this, perhaps in this class or the next class. So these are the two ideas we will be working with. The third idea, which, well, it was actually the first idea that came in, was to rotate this vector, and we'll think about it in a few lectures from now, where we'll talk about second order methods, or Newton-like method for uh, problems of this type. Projection theorem. <coughs> so, what is the meaning of projection of a point onto a convex set? So, I have a convex set. I pick a point that is outside the set, Z. Uh, how should I define projection? Someone wants to give it a shot? Yeah. Uh, are you first defining it as a linear transformation? Sorry? Like, uh, isn't a projection uh, a linear <coughs> transformation which is just a matrix such that if you square it, it's going to be equal? Oh, you are using projection from image processing, I guess. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's not the projection I'm talking about. Uh, Okay, what should be the definition of projection? So, uh, I want to find a point that is closest to Z, but lies inside the set. How should I formulate it as a mathematical object? Okay, yeah. Is that the project? Sorry? Is that the project? I, I use the data project by finding a point inside the set. And so, uh, that is closest to Z? Yeah. So, how would I write it mathematically? <laughs> yes. The minimum of the y in the complex, or sorry, the complex set, um, the minimum of the distance. Um, 
right? Okay, so I pick any norm in Rn, and I want to pick the point that is closest to the the convex set X. Okay, so what do you mean by close? It means that we want to minimize the distance between the points in the convex set and the point Z, which is and Z is outside the set. Now, of course, if Z is inside the set, then trivially, Y the optimal value here, Y star, would be Z itself. But if z is outside the set, then we have to solve some optimization problem in order to find a projection. So let's consider a Euclidean norm, which is a two norm for projection. So this will be two norm for projection. <laughs> but you can do it for any, any other norm as well. Uh, in, in more general spaces. So, but in, in, in the case of optimization, we usually pick two norm. All right. I'm going to denote it by Z plus. Oh, Z plus is the argument. So let me write it as argument of Y minus Z. Uh, y and x. That's my projection. So the projection theorem is that my x is closed convex set uh, and z is in Rn. And the norm is Euclidean norm. OK. I want to write the three important statements of projection. So one, for every Z in Rn, there exists a unique X star in X such that X star equals to argument Y minus Z. 2 norm, y is in capital X. Okay, and that unique x star is called the projection of vector z onto set X. This is projection of z onto set X. The second statement says X star is the projection if and only if Y minus X star transpose Z minus X star is less than equal to zero for all y in the convex set capital X. Okay. And the third part is x1 star equals to projection of z1 
x2 star equals to projection of z2, then norm of x1 minus x2 is less than equal to norm of z1 minus z2. So this is non-expansive, non-expansive. Now let's look at the picture. have a convex set and I have a point Z and it's a closed convex set which means that the boundary is part of the set. Let's look at the first result. It says that there is a unique point X star, unique point X star minimizes this minimizes this objective function okay so no matter which convex set you pick it has to be unique and the reason for uniqueness is this is a strongly convex function okay well we'll get to it in a bit but it's a strongly convex function so it will have a unique minimum over a convex set and therefore this point x star is actually a unique point uh, which is, which solves this optimization problem and therefore that's the projection of, uh, projection of this point Z in the set, okay? Uh, no matter which point you pick in the neighborhood of X star, the distance is only going to increase, it's not going to reduce, okay? That's why you also have uniqueness there. The second point, uh, I pick a point Y, which is in the set capital X, and I look at the vector z minus x star, so that's this direction, and y minus x star, so that's in this direction. And because the set is convex, the angle between these two vectors is always going to be greater than 90 degrees, okay? And because the angle is going to be greater than 90 degrees, their inner product, is going to be less than equal to zero, okay? Is the second point clear? No matter which point in the set you pick, y, 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 no matter which point y you pick, if you look at y minus x star, uh, it will always make an angle which is greater than or equal to 90 degree with respect to z. Let's look at another example, and this is my point z, this will be my projection x star, and if I pick a point y here, y minus x star is making a right angle with z minus x star, so that is z minus x star, and this is y minus x star, so it's making right angle and therefore their inner product will be equal to zero, okay? If I pick Y as some other point within the set, as is the case in this situation, you will always have an angle which is greater than 90 degree. And then the inner product will be negative in that case. And the third point says that if I look at the distance between the projections, they will always be less than or equal to the distance between the original vectors. So let's try and see this pictorially. So this is my x, x1 star. This is my z2 
and somewhere here would be my x2 star. And if I look at the distance between z1 and z2, it's the length of this particular line segment. And the distance between x1 and x2 is the length of this line segment. And as you can see, the distance between z1 and z2 is greater than the distance between x1 and x2 in this case. Okay, so that's the third result here. <clears throat> what do you mean by non expansive? So, non expansive means that you have a mapping. So, this projection is a mapping from the space of Rn to the space of vectors in X, and that mapping. Uh, That mapping uh, doesn't reduce, well, uh, I want to write it more formally. Let me write it here. So let me define H of Z as the projection. Okay. Uh, a mapping H is contractive if h of z1 minus h of z2 is less than z1 minus z2. Sometimes you put an equal, equality sign also here, but sometimes you just put a strictly less than sign. So that is a contractive map, which means that the distance is lowered whenever you apply the mapping h. And so non-expansive means exactly this property where you have a less than equal to sign. Um, so, you know what a Lipschitz constant is for a function? No? Uh, how should I introduce? Do you know what a contraction map is? No? Okay. <laughs> Have you taken 5551 five, five, or? Uh, control any control systems class? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So, well, this is the definition. This is the definition of a con uh, of a uh, non-expansive or a contractive map. Okay. So, in some books, you will have a strict less than equal to strict inequality for contractive, and non-expansive will be denoted by this. And then in some books or some places, you will have an equality sign and they will call it a contractive map or a non-expansive map. It's the same idea. Um, so if you had taken a course in control systems, then you would know that in a discrete time system, if, you're, if the eigenvalues of the linear matrix A is within unit circle, then the map is a contraction map and then it has it's, it's, it's called stable system in the context of control system. So the idea is pretty similar in this case where it's not stable, but, well, I don't want to use stability here, but it's non-expansive, okay? So the idea is very similar where in control systems we call something stable uh, based on the eigenvalues, uh, whereas in this case uh, it's not based on eigenvalues, but it's based on the property of this function h, which is, it is non-expansive. It doesn't increase the distance between the two points. It always makes it less, or at least uh, equal, you know, if not less. Uh, that was a long detour. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions on these projection, on these three statements of projection theorem? Okay, so pictorially it is very clear why these three statements should be true. Yes. How is the angle defined in a, in a hyper? Uh, in a high dimensional space? Yeah. The angle is defined between two vectors, like regular. Like even in three dimensional space, this is a three dimensional space, you know exactly what the angle between these two yes. vectors is, no matter which orientation these two vectors are taking. If it is an angle greater than uh, 90 degrees, yes. then uh, the inner product is less. That's right. 
yeah that's always the case because the inner product is v1 v2 cos theta right all of you remember that okay yes uh, this is only true for Euclidean norms uh, so the book considers Euclidean norm uh, in projection in optimization you usually consider nuclear uh, sorry the two norm or Euclidean norm so therefore uh, So this would be true for any norm, this would be true for Euclidean norm, this should be true for any norm, okay? So I think only this is the case where Euclidean norm uh, is, is important. Okay? Um, Projection is more generally studied in functional analysis, but, uh, but in the case of, in the context of optimization, we only use Euclidean norm because of the, because we always take Taylor series, which has D transpose D term, so therefore, um, Euclidean norm makes more sense for optimization. <coughs> Any other question? Okay. So that was the first idea. If we go out of the set, we project it back onto the set. Uh, typically, this minimization problem would not take too much effort. So therefore, taking a projection will not be too difficult. Um, however, you could have a convex set where taking a projection may be very, very difficult, in which case uh, using this approach may not be a good approach uh, in the sense that you go out of the set and then you project it back onto the set that may not be a good approach so for those cases you have the other approach where you try and find a point within the set x so that x minus xk is a descent direction so let's uh, oh before we get to that let's do some examples of projection so so that way we know exactly in which cases projections are easy to do and in which case projection is difficult to do. Okay. So consider a box set X such that A is less than equal to X is less than equal to B. and z is not in x, then the projection of z uh, is defined as ai if zi is less than equal to ai, uh, zi if ai less than zi less than bi, and bi if zi is greater than or equal to bi. Okay, so the ith component of the projection will satisfy this condition. These uh, will take one of these three values. So this is box constraint. Okay, so pictorially what you are doing, you have a box, you have a point Z, which is outside the box, and you will project that point right onto the surface, which is closest to that particular point. Okay, now that point happens to be this particular, it satisfies these, these uh, conditions uh, for the ith coordinate okay now how would you prove that this is indeed a projection 
Well, all you have to show is that y minus x star, so x star is given there, so y minus x star for every y in the convex set, transpose z minus x star is going to be less than or equal to 0. Uh, and that part is easy to show. If you assume that x star is uh, of this particular form. I leave it uh, as an exercise because it's a tedious calculation, but it's still, it's just tedious calculation. I don't want to do it in class, but you can very quickly do it at home if you spend half an hour <coughs> of your time. <laughs> okay, so this is the projection onto a box set. Uh, let's look at projection onto a sphere. So x equal to norm of x less than or equal to r. Okay, so this is a sphere of radius r. I pick a point z, which is outside the set, uh, outside the sphere. Any thoughts what the projection of z should look like? Yeah. Right, so this would be the point, right? That's the projection of z, x star, uh, proof by picture. But what's the, how do, you, how do I write the coordinate of x star? I want someone else to answer. Yes, r multiplied by z over magnitude of z, okay, norm of z. This is a two norm of z. Uh, okay, any question on this? Are these projections difficult to compute? No, no, not difficult to compute. So therefore, these are the sets over which doing a projection during optimization makes perfect sense because projection is not a computationally difficult task. Uh, let's look at a third example of a projection. Okay, so third example of a projection is I want to project minus c onto, so z equals to minus c onto x, which is x such that ax equal to 0. Yes? So if you have a parabola, which is a convex. Yes, so paraboloid, you mean, right? Something like this. Yeah. So yeah. If we have a point on the middle. Uh, yeah. Here. So will the projection be unique? So if this is so, if you're talking about paraboloid, then this point is in the set. Oh, it's in the set. Yeah. Okay. Don't we consider the surface of the paraboloid as a? It's not a convex set because I can, I pick any two points. The line segment is not part of the set, so therefore it's not a convex set. Okay. Okay, so I want to project a vector minus c onto the set x, which is a subspace. Why is it a subspace? So if I look at the, uh, uh, the space, this particular uh, subspace is actually a hyperplane that passes through origin and of course goes all the way to infinity in all directions. Okay, now I have a vector minus c, or let's say z, and I want to project it back to this set and get the value of x star. 
Okay, so this this hyperplane is passing through origin. Okay, uh, A is any so so X is an Rn, A is a matrix in M cross N, and M is strictly less than N. All right, is that clear? This is the problem. So I want to minimize uh, x plus or y plus c square half, or let's not put half. So, okay, so this is what the projection requires. <coughs> I'm going to change the objective function a little bit so that it becomes easier. half y plus c two square. <coughs> okay. <coughs> So I want to solve this, uh, this problem. Let me replace y of x with a y equal to 0. y in r n. OK, so now this, this problem looks somewhat difficult. It doesn't seem like there is an obvious solution, as was the case for box constraint and uh, sphere. Uh, but let's try and see if there is an easy way to identify the solution to this particular optimization problem. Now from projection theorem, I know that a point x star would be a projection if it satisfies this condition, right? Now. What is y minus x star on in this set? Okay, so let's try and think about that. So y minus x star. So x star is argument. Okay, so my claim is y minus x star is also a vector in capital X, is a vector in X for all y in X, okay? <coughs> Why should this be true? How, how will I check that y minus x star is also a part of the set X? A y minus a star is zero. Right. So, I look at a y minus x star. So, how do, how is this set characterized? So, for every point in the set, a x has to be equal to zero. So, if I need to prove that y minus x star is in the set, all I need to check is a multiplied by y minus x star is equal to zero. So, I do a multiplied by y minus x star. That's equal to a y minus a x star, and each of these terms are equal to zero, and therefore. Uh, their difference is equal to zero, which means that y minus x star is also part of the set x for every y in the set x. Okay, so this is proved. So the projection theorem says, two prime, two prime says that x star equal to z plus if and only if y transpose z minus x star is less than or equal to 0 for every y in capital X. OK, so this is, this is the new if and only if condition for this particular case.
Okay, we are still not done. Okay, it's going to take a few, few more uh, massaging. But I want to pause here and ask question. Uh, I mean, uh, see if anyone has any questions. You have a question? No. Yes. So, I mean, isn't just the inner product zero at the projection for for you like X star? Uh, yes, I think it has to be zero because if y transpose, so if y belongs to x, then minus y also belongs to x, and therefore it has to be equal to zero. Okay, so maybe I should write two double prime, which says that since y belongs to x, so if y belongs to x, then minus y also belongs to x because a minus y is also equal to zero. Uh, so this implies that x star equals to z plus if and only if y transpose z minus x star is equal to 0 for all y in capital X. Okay, so this is our latest deduction. So I want to find a point x star. I want to find a point x star onto the set such that z minus x star is perpendicular to the entire plane. Okay? Okay. Any any further questions or comments? Okay. So all of we agree that if I can come up with x star such that this equation is satisfied, then that x star by this if and only if condition would be the projection of z. So to get the solution, we go to sleep and we, and some god comes in our dreams and says, uh, try this value of x star. Okay, I don't want to make an error, so minus identity minus A transpose, A, A transpose inverse, A, C. Okay, so God says x star is this value. Now how do we prove that God is correct or not? We check whether this condition is satisfied for every y such that y belongs to x. Uh, okay, so z is minus c. Remember z is minus c. So let me do that. z minus x star is equal to A transpose, A transpose inverse AC. Okay. All right. Now let's do Y transpose z minus x star that is given by y transpose a transpose ac and this term is equal to 0 therefore the whole thing whole expression is equal to 0. X star is not a matrix. So this is a matrix and this is a vector. Okay. So you're multiplying a matrix to a vector. And this matrix is a square matrix. Okay, this big thing is a square matrix. Okay. Now this is of course an unsatisfactory result because uh, God cannot always come in the dreams and tell you what the solutions to all your assignment problems are. 
but we will get a uh, we'll come up with a more accurate method not accurate but we'll come up with a method to compute x star exactly using lagrange multipliers in a later class okay but at this point of time uh, all i wanted to tell you was if you want to find a projection of a point onto a set of this type on a subspace you can actually get a closed form expression okay now when is this an easy projection yeah when yeah when a transpose has a well when n is small right so a transpose is essentially n m cross m oh so a transpose is m cross m and rest of it would be just a regular matrix product so yes you are right so if m is small if m is small then this operation is easy to do and therefore uh, projection would be easy to do okay so we have studied three examples today three types of sets where projection is easy to do uh, projection is also uh, projection is very difficult to do well not very difficult but it's uh, reasonably difficult to do on problems of this type uh, minimize half z minus y such that a y less than equal to b and y greater than equal to 0 so if this is my x okay so x is given by inequality constraints then projection is very difficult to do uh, difficult as in you have to solve this optimization problem from scratch okay and we'll we'll study some methods to do the optimization of this type but but I just wanted to give you a feel of in which case projection may be difficult operation and that's one situation where project, projection is a difficult operation and so if you have very large matrices a b and large number of variables y like the vector has a, a big uh, length then in that case it may be not a good choice to use projection during the optimization yes in the x star, if we move a, a transpose, right. the proof still holds, right? Uh, proof still holds. If I remove this inverse part, yes. let's see. Uh, I'm inclined to think that you are correct if uh, that is the case, but then it has to not satisfy some other condition. Oh, yes. Uh, so this x star has to also satisfy a x star equal to zero, right? Okay, so let's see if x star satisfies that condition. Where am I going to write? Uh, let me write it here. So certainly this condition is satisfied, but X star also should lie in the set capital X. So if I look at A X star, then I have minus A minus A A transpose, A transpose inverse, so minus A C, so that's equal to zero, okay? Is that clear? Now, if I did not have this A transpose inverse, then that wouldn't be satisfied. Okay, so that's a good catch. Any other questions? Okay, so we found for this particular problem, we have found an X star which lies in the set capital X, and we have been able to find a projection. Then there are other sets where projection is difficult. So. Uh, if, if, if this vectors are too big, matrices are big, then we don't want to do projection. Now let's get to the uh, 
other idea, so the first idea was if I go out of the set, I project it back onto the set. The second idea was let's look at a feasible direction based on the points within the set. So we'll get the first algorithm based on that, which is a conditional gradient method. I have xk plus, uh, I define x bar k equals to minimum x in capital X gradient of fxk transpose x minus xk. Oh, this is not minimum, this is argument. Okay, and then I have xk plus 1 equals xk plus alpha k x bar k minus xk. This is also known as Frank Wolf <coughs> method. Okay, so the idea here is I'm going to look at the entire set and I'm going to figure out which vector makes least inner product with the gradient of f. Okay, so if it was unconstrained, then the vector would be, well, this distance, the, uh, this d uh, direction would be minus gradient of f because that makes the least inner product with the gradient of f. Uh, but if it is if you have a constraint, so if there is a boundary and so this is my set, this is my xk, this is the gradient of fxk uh, or maybe I should draw it in the other direction, okay. This is my gradient of fxk. So I have to find a vector x, <coughs> x which makes the least inner product with the derivative of the function at point xk. Okay? And then that x will be denoted by x bar k. And I'm going to take a step, a small step in that direction. So this will be my xk plus 1 and I will do the same thing again and again and hope and uh, uh, if I pick alpha k according to Armio's rule or minimization rule and so on, uh, I will always converse to a, first or a point that satisfies the first order necessary condition for optimality. Okay. Again, it doesn't converse to a point that is optimal. In order to prove that the point is optimal, you have to check the second order sufficiency condition. Uh, well, not the second order sufficiency condition, but some other sufficiency condition to make sure that uh, the point it has converged to is locally optimal. But all the theorem says is xk, xk converges to x bar, which is stationary. That's under the assumption that alpha k is chosen according to Armio's rule or minimization rule. And this stationarity doesn't imply optimality. Okay? So that's it for this class. In the next class, we'll talk about how to use projection and develop a new, a different algorithm and also study some properties of conditional gradient method. 
Thank you. Uh, see you on Friday.